Greetings, friend. This is Timberlake from Smart Hobbies. Hope you're doing well. You might be wondering, what am I doing on Unshackling Sudoku? Well, this is a collaboration video. Basically, I am going to solve a puzzle on this channel. Thank you, Ashish Kishore, for giving me permission to do this. And then I want you to go over to my channel, uh, Smart Hobbies, and you can see them solving a puzzle there. And the puzzle we chose is very similar. Uh, it's the name of the puzzle is Fried Fish. It's by Rift Clown. It's a pretty new puzzle uh, released on the CTC Discord server. And what we're going to do is I'm going to solve this puzzle with this one right here in the middle. And believe it or not, if you change that one into a two, you solve the puzzle completely different. Ashish is going to solve it with a two in the middle over on my channel. And for you who don't know uh, my channel, Smart Hobbies, I focus on Sudoku analysis of other solvers doing um, Sudoku puzzles. I also do tutorials where I explain different strategies and techniques in Sudoku and I do live solves similar to what you usually see here on Shacking Sudoku. And so with that it's solving time. So like I said this is Fried Fish by Rift Clown. Um, a little bit different what I do is I like to show all the candidates and solve that way by using eliminations. And then I'll look for restrictions by what has a few amount of candidates and then I kind of go and look for the naked and hidden singles. And what I can tell right here is you have a 489 in block 6. So that means that this can't be 489 and that can't be 489. So that has to be a 1 and that has to be a 6. And then I can come down here and get rid of all the 4s, 8s, and 9s right across and down column 8. And so that means that it has to be a 2. Okay, and then that's a 2. This is going to be a 5. And you can see we're already starting to do some good eliminations. 3, 4, 8, 9. There's a 1 up here. I can't uh, solve any further there. And so now I'm going to kind of cut across the top here and look to see if there's any hidden or naked singles that I might not have found already. Uh, so I'm just kind of scanning across 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm now scanning through row 2. And what I've noticed is that the 6s are restricted to right here in row 2 for block 2. So that means... Uh, this is a claiming pair, and so that means I can get rid of these sixes right there, which tells me that the sixes, you know, in block one have to be up here in row one, these two spots. And same thing uh, with the fours. The fours also can't be right here, and they're restricted to uh, block three right here in row two. So that means that that's a claiming pair, and these fours, these cannot be fours. So the only fours can be up here. And so what I'm seeing, and yep, might be hard to spot, but this is actually a 4-6 hidden pair up here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is get rid of all the other candidates except for the 4-6. And do you notice that? There's not a 4 or 6 anywhere else in block 1. So it's a little bit different when I'm uh, eliminating the candidates, but you can still pick out that uh, as actually a, a hidden pair the way we saw that. Cool. All right, but it helps with a lot of the eliminations. Okay, and moving right along, um, I see two threes across row four, and then I can do about that yet. And then I'm now kind of looking through row five, and I see two sixes right here, which makes sense with the two in rows four and six. And then I'm looking, now I'm kind of row six, row seven. What I do is I scan it right across the top, and I can easily see the one, twos, and threes, and what might be missing, then the four, fives, and sixes, and then the seven, uh, eights and nines and I'm looking to see if there's any like ones that are just singular by themselves or ones that might be limited to a certain block or a row or maybe even a column which is a little bit harder to see the way I'm scanning. Okay I don't see anything else I can eliminate right now and so let's go and now I'm going to filter the candidates and we're going to kind of look here and see by filtering the candidates what other eliminations could we possibly be making. Well and so I'm going to look for uh, Patterns that might make X-wing, swordfish, finned X-wings, those kinds of things. I don't see anything here with the ones. Uh, let's go here to the twos. Not seeing anything yet uh, with the twos. Let's go to the threes. Uh, we got some interesting uh, it's kind of interesting in the way that the, the you know I see a lot of what it called strong links, so there's only two of a candidate, so like there's only two threes and two sevens here in column eight, but there's only two threes here as well. And I want to look over here and see if there's any type of like skyscrapers um, or, uh, you know, any, any kind of X-wing type action or maybe even a swordfish. And I don't 
see that. The other thing I look for would be two string kites, uh, turbot fish, they're also called. And I don't see any of that. Okay. All right, let me see here. Let's see here. Strong. Hmm. Strong, strong. So this is interesting. We do have what I'd call an X chain. I'm not sure if there's another way to, to find it. But if you start right here with the threes, this has a strong link right here to this three. And then this has a weak link to this three because there's more than one three you can go to. But then it has a strong link up to this three, right? And then a strong link here has a weak link to this three and then has another strong link to this three right here. And I'll just mark those. And okay, so what we know is if this was not a three, we could work through these strong and weak links and you'd say this would be a three right here. But if this was, this isn't a three. If you work backward, then this be three. Either way, there's going to have a three at the beginning or end, and this is called an X chain. And so that means that this cannot be a three right here. That cannot be a three. Um, because we know it's going to be three in one of those two orange spots. And we get rid of the coloring. And so that gives us, right here with the threes, now a pointing pair. So that means that we can eliminate this three right there. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I didn't expect to see an X chain, but there it is. Okay, let's go to the fours. And I kind of cleaned out the fours pretty nice. And by clean out, I mean that I got rid of a lot of the extraneous um, uh, candidates. And looking at the fives, I don't see anything to do with the fives just yet. Let's go to the sixes. Okay, with the sixes you have right here, this is a pointing, a claiming pair of sixes actually, because the sixes can only be in block eight here in column five. So that means these can't be a six because the sixes are restricted to this two spots. And you can see how they're, they can't be in blocks two or five right there. All right, uh, moving on to the sevens. And I feel like I have a similar situation to what we saw with the threes. And I wonder if there's something we can do about that. Huh. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. And there is. All right. So I'm going to show you another exchange. And I'm wondering if it's, well, it, you could also see it as a finned uh swordfish believe it or not so I'll, I'll show it as a swordfish i think that might be a little bit more interesting to see all right so let's go here okay so what you notice uh and this right here is our fin is in these three rows rows three four and eight um the sevens are restricted to the same three columns columns two five and nine right so that means uh if you you know have the seven like here then the seven would have to be you know there 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 and so you the sevens are going to be restricted they have to be in one of these these purple spots except now you have this extra fin here so if this fin is true as a seven you can't have a seven right here in this block this is the block we care about but if this seven was false you would have a swordfish and in this swordfish situation you wouldn't be able to have a seven in any other spot in this column. So that wouldn't be a seven, that wouldn't be a seven, and this wouldn't be a seven. But since it's a fin, all we can deduce is right here that if the fin is true, this won't be a seven, and the fin is false, uh, this then we'd have a swordfish, and this still can't be a seven. So what we can do is we can eliminate the seven right there uh, in either case. So that is a fin swordfish, and I, was, I thought that was kind of neat to show that. And so let's get rid of this coloring. And now you notice is this is a pointing pair, and so you have Excuse me. You eliminate the seven right here, which means this has to be a seven. Sorry for my, I clicked that the wrong way. I meant to say that this is a seven. Uh, and now we're actually, uh, you know, able to make another elimination, which is really cool. What else can I do with this? I don't see anything else I can do with the sevens. Move on to the eights, and the eights are pretty busy. Um, I'm looking through here, and I want to see, and I don't see a lot of strong links where there's only two candidates, row, column, or block. Um, I don't see really other situations that I can take advantage of. I don't think we can eliminate really any of the eights right now. And then with the nines, um, similar situation. I don't see where we can really take advantage in laying the nines. But I look right here, four, seven, eight, nine. If I had just a four, seven, eight, nine down here, that would be a naked quad. I don't have that. 
So let's, I'll briefly look here at the XY. You know, this is just all the buy value cells. And I'll see if any of these kind of connect together. And for the moment, they do not. And so I'm going to go back because solving the seven right here might have created some more possibilities for us to kind of solve this puzzle. I don't see any other things I can do with, with the ones. Let's go back to the twos. And the other thing I might want to start looking at is, is seeing if I just overlooked um, some more of these kind of like pair situations. So the pairs or the uh, maybe the triples. Okay, uh, I don't see anything else that I can do with the twos. Not enough restrictions. But now with that seven there, I should have realized I could have put the three right away. And then we can put a three right here and three right here. You can see that there's only one green spot. That means the three is limited in that spot. So then we have a seven and we have a three. Okay, bunch of eliminations. Now you have a four, eight, nine. Well, you know this is an eight, nine. This is an eight, nine. So the four has to be right here in this block. And now these can't be eights or nines because this is a naked pair. So that has to be a one. That has to be a five. Uh, a little bit of symmetry there about how we were able to solve this compared to how we solved block one. Four, eight, nine down there. Can't make any further eliminations with that. Um, but we did make quite a bit of eliminations here. This is really nice. This is definitely good to see because we eliminated all the threes. Uh, I'm going to go right back to the ones just to see if I can go with that. And then the twos. Uh, I don't see anything there. How about the fours? Um, all right, well, you'll notice is this is a pointing pair, so this can't be a four because the fours are limited to row seven here in block eight. So that's not a four, that's going to be a nine. And then that's an eight, and that's a four. Two, six, seven, there's only one seven left here in block nine, so that has to be your seven. Uh, so we have a two, six pair and an eight, nine pair. All right, uh, really, really moving along here. And then with the fours, I can't make any more limitations with the fours, but I'm just going to scan to see if there's anything else I could do. I don't don't see uh, another quick elimination, but I'm, I'm sure I've created some stuff. Another pointing pair right here, so that means that can't be a five and that can't be a five. Hopefully you're understanding what I mean, that the fives are limited right here in this block. So that's why we can't uh, put a five in those spots. Okay. Um, and now I see that the sixes here in block eight are limited to row... Uh, excuse me, column five. So I've already, it looks like I already cleaned that out. Nice. Let's go, let's go back here to the fives. This is now a pointing pair, so these can't be fives as well. And since those can't be fives, that's the only five remaining in column three. All right. And the other thing too, we actually have uniqueness right here. So this two five is, a, uh, this is called a unique rectangle type seven. And what you have is when you have four cells, right? Um, and the fives are limited to these two columns, these two rows, and there's a two five by value cell. So one of those is by value cell. Well, we know that this puzzle has one unique solution. And this is the only time you can apply it is when it has one unique solution, which is most of the Sudokus you're ever going to do. You go across here, and we can actually eliminate the two from here. And why is that? Because if this was a two, that'd be a five, that'd be a five, that'd be a five. And if we saw the rest of the puzzle, you would see that in this two, uh, situation that you could go back and then switch it and have a two, you know, have a five, two, five, two. And so you have two solutions to the puzzle because it'd be twos and fives could be interchangeable in these four spots. We know that can't be the case. And so the key thing here is to look across from where this is, look at the which candidate, in this case, the two can be in multiple spots along that row or column, and then you can eliminate that. Um, so unique rectangle type seven, pretty nice find right there. Let's go to the sixes. Um, you can do the same thing right here. Another type seven unique rectangle, because you see a six eight right here, and it's six eights in every cell, but um, there's multiple eights, but there's not, there's only those sixes. So I can get rid of this eight right there. That cannot be an eight or you'd violate uniqueness. All right, let's go to the, anything else with the sixes that I can take away. Uh, no, not this time. Let's go to the sevens. Oh, we only have one seven left and one seven there. Should have seen that. So now we've eliminated all the sevens. Oh, we are really making short work. And now you can see this is a two, four, eight uh, naked triple right here, right? So two, four, and eight. The twos are limited down here. So we can eliminate these twos because these are now a pointing pair. And then we can eliminate a two, four, and eight from the rest. So this creates a five, six 
naked pair. Since this is a five, six naked pair, we can also check and make sure there's no other fives or sixes along row five. All right, we are really, really moving quite along uh, here. Now I can see this four, eight, and the four, eight along row four. That means this can't be a four and eight, that has to be a five. Hopefully you're noticing the way I'm like eliminating the the candidates in order to solve the cells. It's just kind of like a different way instead of marking all the candidates and, and moving upwards. We're really doing a great job here getting pretty far along in this puzzle. I think we're going to crack it soon. It's not quite cracked yet. Okay. Oh, that's a single solitary. Eight and a six. And a five, six. I should have seen that. A two and a one. Nine, six, two, six. Okay. Well, I think I might have spoken just a little too soon here because we're getting really close to the end now. All right, let me get rid of this coloring. Because you can see now I'm just looking for where the naked singles are, right? So only one candidate left, it's going to be a naked single. One, two, eight. One, two, eight, nine. Uh, eight, two, four. I think we cracked this puzzle. Uh, one. All right, two, eight, two, eight, nine, eight, nine. And you'll notice it's all naked singles from here. Well, what'd you think? Um, hopefully you enjoyed solving that puzzle along with me. If you tried it out, you can do the link below. Let me know what you did. If you tried a different method that solved this puzzle. Um, we use quite a few different things. Some X chains, a fin swordfish, and you know, then those uh, uh, unique rectangles. And that solved this one. I enjoyed this puzzle quite a bit. And like I said, please go check out my channel. It's more hobby. If you want to see more solving like this, uh, I'll put a link to my channel below in the description. Thank you again, Ashish Kishore. Uh, I really enjoy watching your channel. I'm a big subscriber, a big fan, and hopefully, uh, you know, I brought some more value to your channel by being on here. Please don't forget to check out uh, my channel, check out these other videos. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.